Hi there, Andrew Kalita, Operations Manager from On Demand HR. I'm joined today by Clint Indrell, Managing Director. 2021 has been a very reactive year for a lot of businesses with a lot of new and unique challenges presented. Most of the businesses within our network have been focused on simply navigating through. But today we wanna to help you to lift up your eyes and discuss some of the key topics that we think that 2022 will present. So welcome, Clint. Good morning, Andrew. How are you going? Yeah, good. Yourself? Very well, thanks. Good to be here. Yeah, fantastic. Um, today, let's start with the elephant in the room. 2021 was no doubt the year of COVID. Businesses were forced to deal with lots of constant fear mongering provided by the mainstream media, evolving government incentives and support packages for both employees and businesses, as well as movement restrictions that changed on what seemed to be like a daily basis. As 2022 looms, starting with government and movement restrictions, what do you think businesses should be thinking about? I think this is a really difficult um, topic. I think a lot of businesses at the moment will think that um, the government effectively has promised them um, you know, freedoms to operate their businesses from this point forward, um, contingent on certain um, vaccine percentages. Um, I am concerned about what I am seeing in New South Wales and Victoria. Um, First and foremost in New South Wales, it's my understanding that uh, the Health Minister, um, Brad Hazard, is now proposing to extend emergency powers of government to 2023 to not have to pass legislation in relation to COVID-related matters, restriction of movement and so on. And I'm, I'm questioning, well, why would, why would the Health Minister need to do this in, in 2022? Um, the public has uh, effectively complied with um, what the government has asked them to do. Uh, and now it seems to me that if there were to be any restrictions in 2022, that that would be a real breach of faith with uh, not only the Australian people, but I think um, all the people of New South Wales, but also I think the business community. And I think for this year, one of the very frustrating things for, for, for businesses is that, you know, the health orders themselves change something like uh, 50 to 60 times uh, with various uh, additions of the health orders that businesses were required to look at. And you would obviously know that we reported on this on a, on a regular basis. So I'm concerned about those powers. Um, I don't think it's necessarily going to be just smooth sailing in 2022. It should be, but I, I just don't know that that's going to happen if these emergency powers are being sought and um, why they're being sought. Victoria, the same sort of situation. We're seeing uh, Daniel Andrews at the moment uh, pushing ahead with the pandemic bill. Uh, and once again, the, the Victorian people have, have um, complied with the Victorian government's requirements, yet that doesn't seem to be good enough. And effectively, uh, by having these pandemic powers and the ability to declare certain things whenever the government sees fit, um, are we gonna be in a state of um, further lockdowns in 2022? Um, I would certainly hope not, but um, certainly the positioning that we're seeing from both, certainly New South Wales and Victoria, um, is that that is the case. And, uh, we may see the same in Queensland once they've complied with the government directions. Um, will we see Queensland do the same thing? Will it's, we see other states do the same thing? It's interesting though, the difference between New South Wales and Victoria, and this is just something that came to mind as we were talking, is that Brad Hazard in, in New South Wales is seeking to extend the powers to make to unilaterally make decisions around restrictions and movements and to extend his power as a health minister. The interesting thing in Victoria is they're going down maybe a little bit of a different path, although it's been not very well received by the Victorian public. Mm. At least they're going down the path of legislating the powers that are available to different bodies. Mm. Surely at this stage in New South Wales, we're past the point whereby it's an emergency response and we can start mm. thinking about the strategic response that's required and what powers are and are not available to the health minister and his team. Mm. So it's it's kind of two sides of the coin there. Yeah, well, I think, um, I, I think frankly, the default position for these governments should be from 2022, that um, if they are to restrict anyone's movement anymore and restrict the activities of businesses, they should have to go through a democratic process to do it. Mm. There shouldn't be, now that they've effectively you know, imparted conditions on um, Australian businesses, New South Wales and Victorian businesses, and 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 the people and people have complied with their you know their KPIs, let's call it. Um, 
there really should be no need for this, this kind of ability to just unilaterally create further restrictions. If they feel that there's a need to create further restrictions, well, put it through the democratic process, um, which in New South Wales is gonna be challenging. There's a lot of by-elections coming up. Um, we've also got um, potentially the government not holding the balance of power, but that's what the democratic process is there for. Um, it's not there for one person to make a decision. It's there for all members of the, um, the parliament to make such decisions um, on such significant things that, you know, frankly, in New South Wales have been costing the economy uh, billions of dollars over, over 2021. I mean, these are important things. These are not things that should be made by, um, you know, two or three or decisions that should be made by just a couple of people. Well, look, at the very least, maybe there needs to be some consideration around um, some sort of legislative process to strictly define in terms of COVID what the powers of the health minister actually are. It may be a little bit unreasonable to some degree to um, have legislative process around every decision that the health minister makes. But in the context of COVID, surely enough time has passed whereby we can have a legislative process and get voted up or down and negotiated out amongst the parliament as to the exact scope and nature of the powers and the orders that the health minister can make in order to be able to provide businesses with some level of security and confidence to move forward. Because at the moment it's just, well, what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, exactly. I don't think that, I don't think that security exists at the moment, quite frankly. Um, I think the situation is that I think the health minister should have very limited powers from next year. Um, effectively, there's been modelling that's been done around this, around the Doherty modelling and so on. And uh, without getting into the, the validity of that, I mean, that was talking about targets like 80%. And now we've got New South Wales saying that they're going to restrict certain things until 95%. So um, again, it, it's a sort of, it's, it's sort of strange. It's modelling when it's convenient, modelling, no modelling when it's not convenient. Um, I think the health ministry should have very little, little powers and should have to be legislate um, whatever it is that they propose to do to any New South Wales business in 2022. But we will see if that um, we'll see if that occurs. I think the same should occur in um, Victoria and and the other states as well. Yeah, I think I think just summing up the COVID situation and the restriction side of things, I think the key word that really come out of that was security and confidence. Yeah, we, you know, we can't just have an open book in order to make strategic decisions. We need to start lifting up our eyes as businesses and moving forward. Otherwise, we're never going to get out of this. Uh, exactly right, and uh, I don't think that the New South Wales economy and frankly, the Victorian economy can afford to have a 2022 like 2021. Um, and, and, and the only other final point I would make is that it just seems to me that the, the decisions this year that have been around lockdowns and restrictions and closures just been so arbitrary. I mean, we've, we've effectively had a lockdown in June based on, I think it was around less than 50 cases across the state. And then we've effectively opened up on, you know, thousands cases so you know how exactly are we picking these numbers i mean queensland have, have, have locked down on less than 10 cases in the past so so that, i mean that's just not good enough anymore for business i think business need some confidence um you know we've got hospitality businesses at the moment and we'll, i'm sure we'll, we'll talk about this later but hospitality businesses at the moment are in an absolute crisis i mean people have left to other industries there's shortages across the board and I think, unfortunately, a lot of the problems that have been created for hospitality businesses are you know, problems from government decisions. Thanks very much, Clint, for your time today to offer these insights and thoughts for our members, associate members and guests. For anyone that's watching that's not already a member, why should they consider reaching out to On Demand HR to discuss their HR and workplace relations affairs? Look, On Demand HR, we've been around for uh, quite a long time now. We've worked with um, a significant uh, number of businesses over that time. We have refined our offering. We, we plan to work with a much smaller number of clients going forward on, on a very uh, close, uh, intimate basis. Uh, all of our you know, membership arrangements that we offer clients are unlimited. And the reason that we offer them on an unlimited basis is so that we can um, be helping clients with issues as soon as they arise. We don't wanna be just dealing with problems um, when they've escalated to a point where we can only have very little limit, limited influence on the result. We want to um, help a client achieve their best commercial outcomes as early as possible. And, and the best way to do that is through, um, as I said, an unlimited advice arrangement. So that's something that we've offered um, to our clients this year and has been very well received. Um, the other things that we offer to our clients is obviously representation in various different uh, employment tribunals, uh, representation on workers' compensation claims uh, and our recruitment services as well, where we offer a very unique uh, campaigning service uh, which I think will be the recruitment uh, method of the future. 
um, getting away from the, um, the recruitment agent model where it's just um, placements for fees. Um, what we offer in that regard is, uh, is company branded recruitment campaigns uh, managed outside by us as, a, as an alternative to your traditional recruitment models. So those are some of the things that certainly um, businesses should consider in uh, why they might be want to become an on-demand HR member. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Clint, and all that's watching. We wish you all well in closing out what has been, no doubt, a challenging 2021. For those of you that can take a break, use the time to recharge and plan for what will no doubt be a challenging yet exciting 2022. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year from all of the team here at On Demand HR. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you.